we're gonna make banana bread, a really simple go-to recipe. First, you're gonna need half a cup of butter, fairly soft. To that, you're gonna add one cup of white sugar. Combine those, two eggs. We're gonna gig that one egg in there. A lot of people bring their eggs to room temperature just before they bake. Let's mix that last egg in there. What you're doing is just getting it to a nice little creamy stage, which doesn't take long. Okay, now the star of the show, the bananas. No, bananas don't look like this in Canada. <laughs> I know they look pretty pathetic, but anytime my bananas are getting really, really ripe and nobody wants to eat them, I throw them in the freezer. That way I can use them for whatever, smoothies, freezies, and in this case, some banana bread. Actually, I find whenever I make banana bread with frozen bananas, it is incredibly moist. This recipe that I've kind of been using for as long as I can remember calls for three bananas. When you freeze them, it loses its density. So you may want to add four if you're going to use the, your frozen bananas. In this case, I only have three. So what the hell, let's use three. Okay, my whirly gig. That's all you really want to do is just mix it together. Okay, to this, I'm going to add half a teaspoon of vanilla. For those of you who are not that comfortable with baking, often you'll see the words wet ingredients, dry ingredients. What we made right there with the bananas and the eggs, the sugar and the butter is called the wet ingredients. Now we're going to mix together the dry ingredients. One and a half cups of white flour, one teaspoon baking soda, half a teaspoon of salt, and just gonna stir that up with a fork. Fork makes a great tool for dry ingredients and you wanna mix it well because I've had people's baked goods and you chomp on it and you go, oh, <laughs> I just ate that one teaspoon of baking soda. Good enough. At this point, we don't need my whirly gig anymore. So let's get rid of her and let's fold in our dry ingredients, shall we? I usually like to do a little at a time. It's good enough and it's good enough. Okay, so let's take a closer look at what I'm doing here. Just mix it up till it's everything is wet you don't really want to over stir your flour. So at this point, most people will put it in their bread loaf and put it in the oven. I don't. I always like to add a little something and something to my banana bread. So today we're going to add some chocolate chips. Okay, let's put in three quarters of a cup. Why not? Sometimes I put in blueberries, sometimes I put in mushed up mangoes, sometimes I put in strawberries, all kinds of stuff. Back in the day, I'd call it my Sunday bread because I cleaned out the fridge and put everything in it. Okay, ready to pour in my fart. I'm gonna pour it in a thing. Like I said, I figured what it is. It's called a banana loaf. I found this neat thing on Amazon. Rather than grease your pans and then flour them, it's all in one container. Like, holy shit. Back in the day, we used to have to work so hard. Now it's like, everything's a no brainer. God, smells really good too. Okay, done. Let's pour the sucker in here and away we get. And we're ready to rock and roll. Doesn't look nice now, but in the oven she goes. 350 degrees for about 50 minutes. I've had this in for about 45 minutes. I know I said 50, but I thought I'd test it at 45. Let's put this wooden stake in the middle. Okay, you see? I pull it out and there's still some stuff on it. So it's not done. Let's give her another five minutes. The kitchen smells great. You can smell the bananas. And let's cut into this sucker. So moist. I think those frozen bananas make a difference. Look at that, oh, the steam is still coming off. I did let it sit for about 15 minutes before I'm ready to serve it. Inside, you're gonna see some of the blueberries. <laughs> AKA chocolate chips. Use the basis for that recipe for banana bread and add anything you want to it. I added chocolate chips, but as I said before, blueberries, anything you want. Enjoy. Ciao for now.